Uh, how are you all? I hope uh, everybody fine. Although there are uh, some bad news here and there. Uh, so I wish you all are safe. Uh, so before starting the uh, today's class, I, I would like to share some uh, motivational thoughts with you all that may help you to update your knowledge and keep your momentum. Actually, recently I watched a video clip uh, released by Tony Robinson. He's a, a motivational speaker in US, top motivational speaker in uh, US. He's mentioning that uh, we are learning machines because technologies are changing very rapidly and speedily. So we have to update ourselves to survive or to, to run in line with the technology's development. Not only for technologies, it is applicable for even the banking industry as well or financial industries as well. In the banking and financial industry and financial markets are rapidly developed Every day there are some innovations, there are some news updates. So we have to always, we have to keep our momentum and we have to change ourselves as a learning machines. So as a student or as a professional in the financial institutions, it is always better to read some financial pages or business pages of uh, business pages of uh, the paper newspapers and update yourself so that is that is that will help you to keep the momentum so having that uh, note i like to move into the uh, today's uh, uh, presentation or today's class uh, last two weeks we have uh, discussed about the risk management as well as complaints function in the last class, we have discussed about some past paper questions related to the risk management and complaints functions. You will have any, any questions to you ask from me or any clarifications you all wanted to ask from me. If you all have any questions or any clarifications, I can clarify you as usual. You can, uh, you can ask the questions through the chat box or you can unmute the microphones and ask from me. Uh, any, any, any questions? Okay. If you all don't have any questions, I will move to the today's class. Uh, as, as I mentioned today, or as I mentioned in the first class, we have these topics to be covered for our, this financial institution management subject. Already we have discussed about the uh, uh, risk management as well as complaint functions. So today I'm planning to discuss about this financial reporting and analysis. Okay. Then before starting or before going to the detail as usual, or we will see what is financial reporting. So, it is the financial reporting is a process of producing statements that disclose an organization financial status to the relevant stakeholders or users. So it is basically it giving the information about the financial position or financial performance of the institutions. It may be bank or it may be finance company or it may be another uh, some producing company some companies or some other entities so whatever, whichever the entities they are producing the statement that disclose the organization's financial status to the 
relevant stakeholders or users. So who are the stakeholders in a company or in a bank? There may be several stakeholders in the, in the, in the bank or uh, finance companies. First, shareholders become one of the stakeholders and depo depositors become one of the stakeholders and lenders become one of the stakeholders and regulators, tax authorities, government organizations and there may be likewise and even employees and board of directors. These are the people become the stakeholders to the organization. Other than the stakeholders, there are maybe general people like students like you all. You all may use the financial statements of the uh, of the company or bank or finance uh, or, or finance companies. So for this purpose, for the purpose of using by stakeholders or other users, relevant stakeholders or other users, the company or bank or finance companies disclose the organization financial status. Which, which process is called the produ uh, uh, process of producing statement. So it involves the disclosure of financial information to both internal and external stakeholders of the entities. When I am mentioning that there are some internal stakeholders. Internal stakeholders are, for example, we can say employees. Employees are internal, internal stakeholders. And uh, Board of Directors, one of the internal uh, stakeholders, internal auditors, one of the people, they, are, they may expect a financial statement, internal stakeholders, external stakeholders, regulators, uh, accounting bodies and tax authorities. Likewise, they are the external stakeholders of the entity. So these financial statements are producing uh, for the usage of uh, stakeholders, inter, it may be internal stakeholders or external stakeholders and other users like uh, researchers or students and some other analytical peoples. So by the way, uh, the rating agencies also become one of the uh, stakeholders. Uh, they, they expect or they, are, they, they use the uh, financial statement of the companies. Okay, so far I have mentioned you all that uh, the financial state or financial reporting is a process of producing statement that disclose an organization financial statement. Okay, this is sort of, uh, what can I say? It is sort of uh, the theoretical definition. In simple way, what is financial reporting or what is financial statement? Because the financial reporting is a process producing a, a statement that disclose the financial statements. Then again, again the next uh, question is coming there. What is financial statement or what sort of statement they are producing to disclose the fi organization's financial statements? Generally, there are five types of financial, uh, five types of financial uh, statements are available. First one is, financial position statement which is called balance sheet of the bank or finance company or any any entities other one is performance statements this performance statement including profit and loss account of the finance company so the bank and other other income statement so that is other other in the other income statement those are the basically you can keep in mind the profit and loss account of the uh, institution. Other one is statement of changes in uh, equities, which is also one of the uh, financial statements considered as one of the main element of the financial statement. The fourth one is a cash flow statement and fifth one is notes to accounts. So if somebody asks that what is financial statements? You can say that simply you can keep in mind these are there are five statements are called financial statement, balance sheet, PNL, cash flow statement, and changes in equity, sta equity statements and uh, notes to the financial statements. So these five components make the financial statements. 
so process of producing these five components of the statement that disclose the organization finances status to the relevant stakeholders and users are called the financial report now you all may understand i think i think you all have had a clear understanding about financial reporting then there is other questions coming then why financial information is needed because we are saying that okay we are producing financial statements uh, to the to disclose the organization finance status to the relevant stakeholders and users then there may be questions that why this financial information is needed that is an obvious question so why the stakeholders expect the finance statement of the particular company or bank or uh finance companies so uh, there may be several sta uh, stakeholders we will uh, look into the one by one uh, why they want this financial information of a company or bank or finance company first we will take the management for the management to plan and manage the business and to take important bus business decisions they need the financial statements of the particular bank or finance companies to plan the about their business future business plans to take some strategic decision so when they are taking some strategic decision they need the financial statement for example uh they wanted to expand some uh, business activity in some region for example southern region or moragala district they wanted to expand their business so they wanted to have a financial statement the regional uh, profit and loss accounts okay whether it is profitable to expand those areas or if a bank wanted to um, wanted to uh, uh, launch some new product for a consumers for a for a consumer loans category so first they wanted to know that the financial statement they wanted to see the financial statement whether it is profitable to uh, launch a new product for a consumer loan targeting the consumers a consumer loan category because uh, if it is a consumer loan category is recording high npls or high non performing loans or their repayment is very poor then it is no point to, uh, come up with other other product for that uh, consumer loans category because it is always in the asset quality is a questionable so to take the decision like the, the strategic decision or any business decision the management need the finance statements that is the first thing another one is the shareholders and pros prospective investors what is the expectation of shareholders by using this uh, finance statement the shareholders will always check whether their investments are safe whether the company's value is adequate enough to cover their investments whether they are having the potential to get adequate return from their investments for that purpose the shareholders and prospective investors expected to use the finance statement for that purpose they need the financial information and depositors of course in sri lanka uh, depositors are uh, looking to the only what what they are looking when they are looking uh, they when they have some money they wanted to deposit with the banks and finance companies they are always giving more prominent to the for what interest rate but they don't think about the risk from that particular deposits but usually it is expected that depositors must must have idea about the banks or companies finance companies financial positions of course somebody can say that it is depend on the financial literacy in sri lanka the literacy rate is very low or of course somebody can argue that there's a central bank which has to look after the uh, interest or the safe and soundness of the finance institutions so why depositors need to worry about the uh, 
the safeness of the institution. No, that is not uh, actually true because each and every depositor has the obligation to check whether their deposits are safe in their institution. When they are, when they are not only uh, when they are investing or then when they are depositing the money, they have to think about whether this institution is safe or not. For that purpose, they must know the financial information. And uh, actually, uh, at least they must know about their ratings of the particular banks or finance companies. So for that purpose, the depositors need the financial information. Regulators. As usual, the regulators uh, allowed to have the financial information because they have to assess the risk level of the banks and financial institutions, finance companies. So, what they are to, to availability of the resources to mitigate the risk, to check that to, to whether this bank or finance companies has adequate resources to mitigate the risk, they have to have the financial information. So, when we are studying the uh, risk management section, I have mentioned that the one of the item in the balance sheet are always considered as a cushion to mitigate the risk. What is that item? Or oh, one of the component of the uh, balance sheet always regulators or risk management see as a cushion to mitigate the risk. Or if there is any excess risk, that component will absorb that excess risk and safeguard the institution. What would be that cushion? Or what, what would be that co component? Did you get the point? Have you all uh, understand the questions? The question is, when we are studying the risk management section, I have mentioned to you all that, Okay, the bank can have take more risk, but to mitigate that risk level, they must have some cushion. So that cushion is identified based on the capital. So that capital, every why the bank must have banks are required to keep more capital because capital function as a cushion to mitigate additional risk. That's why this Basel Accord says that the capital must be maintained correlated with the risk weighted assets. That is the idea behind the Basel Accord. So the regulators will check whether they have the adequate capital to mitigate the risk. So for that purpose, the, uh, the regulators will check whether uh, the financial information and to check whether these people have compliance uh, with the, the regulatory requirement to make the policy decision to evaluate the transparency of financial information. For this purpose, the regulators uh, like to have or uh, always uh, used to this financial reporting or financial statement of the banks and fin uh, finance companies and employees. Of course, employees also, you all know that. The employees must know that, okay, uh, whether my company is safe, uh, can I continue this? Uh, if, because the safety and stability of the company will ensure the uh, safety of that employment. So for that purpose, and uh, to get, uh, if the company produce good uh, profit only, they can bargain uh, their salaries and allowances. For that purpose, they will always uh, keen about the financial information of the uh, companies or banks or finance companies and rating agencies need not to explain actually the rating agencies are <clears throat> always depend on the financial information to evaluate the credit worthiness of the institution here i have mentioned the word this instrument okay it is obvious that to rate the credit worthiness of institutions are understandable. What is the instrument? What is the purpose? I have mentioned the instrument here. The third blood, the rating agencies, I have mentioned that 
to rate creditworthiness of the institutions and in or instruments because you all know that when the banks and finance companies or any listed companies when they are issuing the listed debentures that particular debenture series issue and should be or debenture instrument should be rated so there are may be different rating for the particular issue and institution and there are may be different rating for the particular instrument so based on that instrument only the people will go okay this is double a rated instrument this is double b rated instrument or if it is a, it's a it's a rated instrument then they may Uh, decide the intra interest expect interest rates for that instrument so for that purpose the rating agencies are always keen to get the financial information of the companies and financial institution the for the lending decisions if it is if i am a business i am getting the loan from a bank for the lender to take the lending decision financial institutions have uh uh it keen on to the finance information and the government any agencies government agencies i need not explain much because you all know the tax agencies and some other uh, government agencies uh, and to take the policy decisions and tax collections and customs and all they may like to have the finance information so these are the uh, so here of course we first we discuss what is the financial reporting and then we have discuss about that why financial information is needed for different stakeholders management shareholders depositors regulators employees rating agencies finance institutions and government agencies any questions any questions you all wanted to ask from this okay then uh, since there is no questions i i'll move to the uh, next one the financial reporting okay the annual financial reporting there are some steps are followed by the banks and finance companies to release the annual financial statements or quarterly financial statement of course uh, this is more applicable to the annual financial statements because uh, generally the quarterly financial statements are not audited statements but annual financial statements are generally audited one so for the annual financial statement these steps are more applicable so first the finance department draft the finance statement after end of the uh, financial year the finance department will draft the finance statement then as a second one they will send it to the um, after the internal audit checking and all they will send it to the board audit committee and then board audit committee will check that and review it and then they will submit it to the board of directors and after that process it, it is the external auditors will commence the audit so the draft now the draft account is ready the draft account will be submitted to the audit external audit people and the external audit people will review that uh, the particular accounts and they will submit them through the management letter they will say adjustments and all then they will do the some adjustments and then after that they will give the audit opinion and uh, then it, it is go to the audited it, it is it will be turned to the audited finance statement and the audited finance statement will again submit to the board of directors and the board of directors will uh, publish the they, once they get approved it they publish the annual report or disclosure requirements through the actually in the Uh, different uh, institutions may need to require, require are required to publish their annual report in different form if it is the listed companies they have to publish their annual report or they have to send it to the columbus stock exchange if it is a bank they have to publish in the 
uh, three language in three languages newspapers. One is in English, one is Tamil, one is Sinhala. So they have to publish in each uh, each uh, papers. Um, so likewise, there are some disclosure requirement. So uh, they will uh, board of directors will publish the accounts through that uh, by in accordance to the disclosure requirements. So these are the steps they will follow to uh, to publish the uh, or financial reporting purpose. Uh, the next one is the legal and regulatory requirement on uh, financial reporting of the financial institutions. This FIS means financial institutions. So the legal and regulatory requirements on uh, financial reporting, there are several legal, legal requirements which uh, emphasize or which uh, emphasize the banks and financial institutions, maybe insurance companies to publish their accounts. There are maybe certain uh, requirements. So first one is the Sri Lankan accounting statement is one of the first requirement, which is everybody knows that even uh, those who are working in the finance institutions may get to know that this IFRS, the SLFRS 9 and other fair value treatment and all, which is more financial assets of fair value of the financial assets, which are more relevant to the finance uh, business peer institutions for finance institution. So accounting in uh, Sri Lankan accounting standards uh, required that one of the uh, legal and regulatory requirement. The other one is uh, requirement of banking act for the especially for the banks there are uh, according to the banking act there are some requirement actually we will see what are the requirement in the subsequent slides another one is uh, based on the requirement of based on the uh, business, finance business act number 42 of 2011 a requirement of insurance industry act and continuing uh, listing requirement of Columbus stock exchange and requirement of companies act and relevant regulatory direction. And these are the some of the legal and regulatory requirement on the financial uh, reporting of financial institutions. So we will see one by one. This is of course uh, about the uh, wait. This is about the uh, financial uh, Sri Lankan accounting standard. As per the Sri Lankan accounting standard, uh, these are some of the important uh, standards uh, which which require the uh, financial statement to uh, some disclosure requirement and uh, preparation of financial statements. So first one is SLFRS uh, 4 about the insurance contract and then SLFRS 7 about the financial instrument and disclosure and this is the famous one this slfrs 9 the about the finance instruments and fair value uh, how to report the financial instruments and slfrs 13 fair value measurement and lks 1 presentation of financial statement lks 16 property plant and equipment lks 24 related party disclosure related party disclosure also one of the important uh, one of the important aspect you'll have to the when 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 banks and finance institutions prepare the uh, financial statement they have to take into consider so these are the requirement uh, emphasized by uh, sri lankan accounting standard the other one is sorry other one is the requirements under the the ba means banking act and FBA means Finance Business Act, number 42 of 2011. And IAA, IAA means, in, oh, what is that? Uh, Insurance Industry Act, uh, uh, the requirement. So even all the, under the, all these act, uh, audited finance statement as per the specific formatted by the regulator, the regulator and company with the accounting standard. They are saying that it should be in accordance to the this all three act uh, required the institution, the respective institution to uh, follow the uh, regulator and uh, comply with the accounting standards. And with regard to the submission, banking act says that within five months, 
they have to submit it to the director bank supervision so dbs means director bank supervision they have to submit their annual accounts uh, within 5 months and uh, business finance act number 42 of 2011 business financial act uh, according to that act it is recorded that within 3 months it has to be submitted to the director non bank supervision department of the central bank of sri lanka so db director bank supervision also coming under which institution the central bank of sri lanka uh, this uh, there is a department called bank supervision department so they have to uh, the bank should submit the annual report to the director bank supervision department within 5 months and non bank supervision within 3 months director non bank supervision department and uh, for the insurance institutions they have to submit within 6 months to the insurance board now of course it is insurance regulatory commission not the insurance boards uh, now it's called as a insurance regulatory commissions so they have to submit within 6 month and with regard to the publication it says that banking act within 5 months in three language paper that's what i say that in english one in tamil one and in singular one so they have to submit in three language papers within 5 months annual report and annual accounts and uh, for the business finance act within 3 months they have to they also have to publish in the three languages papers why they, they those requirements are coming because others and deposit particularly depositors should get uh, idea about the banks and finance companies so if they are financial conditions are going worse then they have to get alert so that is the purpose it is required that okay they have to publish in three language uh, newspapers then uh, it is understandable that the 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 citizen of the country will get uh, information about those banks and uh, finance companies financial positions and customer disclosure financial statements as each business places for the banks and finance companies it is recorded that the financial statements and annual report should be made available each and every business places it means and, and at their branches it should be made available if they want if a customer or any any user wanted to get that information they can get the yeah, actually it it doesn't mean that they will give the copy to you but uh, it is available to you to read there or even if you if you go through their websites uh, their this banks and finance company website it is always available and auditors uh, the pa panel of list qualified auditors uh, it is it is under the banking act and finance business act the panel of auditors are mentioned so uh, it has to be the, the finance statement has to be audited by panel of qualified auditors they can select they, they can't give the audit to everybody there are some list time to time published by the uh, central bank so be, within the list they can select one of the auditor and can give to the to audit so these are the requirement uh, basically uh, basically related to the uh, requirement under this uh, banking act and finance any any questions you all wanted to ask from me today the students are not that much active i think so far there is no questions i like to hear some questions or so like to ask some questions from you all then i can confirm that okay you all are active any any anything any volunteers okay i hope you all are active in the class and you all are understanding so uh, there may be two uh, there may be two instances where there will not be any questions from the students i am always telling this in the class if the students are understanding everything they may not ask any questions or oh, the students are understanding nothing understand nothing they know they only 
even at that situation they won't ask any questions i hope this is the first example or the first category you will understand everything that's what you all are not asking the questions i hope so uh so having that i'll move to the next section which is about major disclosures in finances statement okay we have st started with what is financial uh, statement process or financial reporting process and we are we say that the we the banks and finance companies publish financial statement to disclose the financial position of the or financial status of the banks and finance companies okay then what are the disclosure requirements so what are the major disclosures they have to make through this financial statements the first one is we are asking that why disclosures are important and required this is the first thing they ask why disclosures are important before seeing that what are the disclosures because to provide useful and accurate consistent and comparable information for the decision making of the users for example we are seeing that okay we let's let's assume that there is no accounting standard there is no regulatory requirements so banks are publishing the accounts whatever the format they want and then the this year the banks are publishing in one format and next year they are publishing in one format even within a year bank a publishing in different format bank b publishing in different format bank c in different format can we compare these accounts no actually there should be a comparability and there should be a consistency throughout the time then only the users can uh, users can use that financial information for their decision making so that purpose to provide useful accurate and consistent and comparable information for the decision making they need the disclosures and second one is to comply with the statutory requirement that's why they are they are they are making this uh, disclosure one is accounting standard and uh, if it is a listed company columbus take a change uh, asking uh, required that okay you will have to give quarterly information quarterly finance statements and annual finance annual reports audited reports you will have to submit it. if it is a central bank the regulators they are asking that uh, based on the banking act they wanted to submit it. so statutory requirements they have to come and to maintain investors and depositors confidence uh, and thereby to promote the finance system stability because we have always seen that depositors and in, uh, depositors con confidence is most important in the financial business that will give the stability finance system stability will created through the depositors confidence if the depositors lose the confidence and if they started to withdraw from banks uh, the withdraw their deposit from the banks and finance companies then what will happen there will be a bank run if the bank run started to one bank and they are it may spread it to other banks as well and ultimately it will lose the finance system stability of the country and if the finance system stability collapses then it is or economical will will automatically will collapse economy will automatically collapse so in that scenario the disclosure requirement is to maintain the investors and depositors confidence and they are by to promote the finance system stability the fourth one is to help identifying various type of risk and the effectiveness of the risk management framework we need the disclosure it is important and encourage arms length transaction no favorable treatment and to pre prevent unethical practice actually for this purpose only we are we are requesting or the regulators are requested to uh, publish the uh, related party transactions that is a disclosure requirements and to promote transparency of information on the affairs of the 
business and to promote market discipline uh these uh, disclosures are required and important method and way of disclose finance statements uh there are several methods are using to disclose the financial information of the bank and finance companies the first one is quarterly publication of finance statements actually even the bank has to publish their uh, bank and finance companies uh, has to publish their quarterly finance statement in the papers and if it is a listed institution they have to pass a, a publish their quarterly finance statement through the um, scc columbus check and csc websites so uh, this is one of the way quarterly publication of the finance statements then that, that will give more frequent um, uh, frequent information about their finance statement of the banks and finance companies and other companies as well and publication of annual reports which you all everybody knows that uh publication of annual report they publish the annual report and they will have the annual general meeting and state shareholders can participate in the annual general meeting and they, even they publish through the uh, their websites and they uh, the books they can they 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 they, 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 they uh, distribute to the uh, shareholders and press releases you can see in the business pages you can see there may be several press releases there are several press releases which say said okay these banks particular banks profit has been increased this much and the the asset quality have been improved this much and they 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 give the more more idea to the investors and depositors through the press releases and the financial information posted on the websites there there can be financial informations can be posted to the on the websites and regular reporting to regulators cbsl insurance board of course insurance regulatory commissions and scs uh, cc securities and exchange commissions and all and financial report to government agencies example tax authorities like that and prospect pertaining to the issuance of common stock and the other institutions so these are the way the banks and finance companies and other insurance companies and other financial institutions uh, convey disclosing their financial information to the public and stakeholders as well as users other users uh this is of course we have uh, uh seen already the regulated laws and regulator but this is sort of Uh, disclosure laws and regulations uh, related to the disclosures first one is according to the sri lankan accounting standard lks1 required that co contents of uh, contents in finance statements slfrs7 finance instrument and risk management disclosure requirements and slfrs13 fair, fair value disclosure requirements and lk is 24 about the related party disclosure requirement so these are the relevant uh, standard industry regulators are, or accounting standards are required to uh, record the banks and finance companies and other companies to follow this uh, for the disclosure purpose and corporate governance disclosure of course central bank or uh, the bank supervision department as well as non bank supervision department also issued Uh, different corporate governance uh, guidelines to the banks and finance companies under that they have to make some disclosures to the uh, stakeholders and uh, securities and exchange commission and ca uh, chartered institutions of sri lanka jointly issue the corporate governance code best practices code of conduct and best practices under that there are some disclosure requirements and basel 3 pillar 3 the market discipline under that also there are maybe 14 formats or something which you have to mention about the capital 
levels and this management level the, the, that's also required some uh, disclosure requirement and securities and exchange commission scc continuing listing requirements which we can see through this uh, csc website columbus stock exchange website and global report uh, reporting initiative eri that's also required something so these are the uh, laws and regulations required on uh, disclosure requirements applicable to disclosure requirements so if there is any questions you are uh, ready to answer this and uh, again we are saying that disclosures in the finance statements uh, i have already mentioned i think this this slide have been already mentioned there are five primary financial statements are available the first one is statement of financial position which is balance sheet everybody may know that this is balance sheet and this is the first and uh, foremost important to know the financial position of the company on a particular day financial position the second one is about the financial performance of the bank and finance companies uh, the first one is financial position this is financial performance statement of comprehensive income which has two parts first one is the profit and loss for the period other uh, second one is other comprehensive income for the period which is of course under this I, uh, ifrs or slfrs 9 there are some <coughs> items uh, have been shown through the other comprehensive income for a period so uh, they will there are something uh, so uh, this financial statement uh, statement of comprehensive inf income has two par component profit and loss uh, for the period and other comprehensive income for the period and third one as i said already statement of changes in equities you can see that also in the even the newspapers you can see that they put that one statement changes of equities okay initially what is the balance our opening balance and what are the changes take place during the period and what is the end of the balance and there are equity what will happen because shareholders may have more interest on these equity changes that is and a statement of cash flow which is which will give some idea about the liquidity risk of the institution so uh, it is the five and the fifth one is accounting policies and notes to financial and these are the primary financial statements uh, which uh, uh, used to financial reporting purposes any any questions you will want to ask from me i don't know why the students are keeping silence today okay then uh, we move to the risk management disclosures uh, under the risk management disclosures uh, there are so certain disclosures are required by the risk management uh, requirement if you see the annual reports uh, there are some nice write up about the uh, risk management section and uh, they may say that uh, what is the framework they are having and uh, what are the uh, quantitative manner and qualitative manner they have will, they will disclose it and uh, whether they are having three lines of defense or integrated risk management framework and uh, how they are they are they are, what are the strategies they are using to manage the uh, credit risk and liquidity risk those those type of risk management disclosures are you can see in the annual report Basically, these are the items on quantitative and qualitative manner on the face of finance statement as notes. So as a notes, they will say that. And summary of quantitative data about exposure to each type of risk. Because there are some highlight which will give quantitative information about the risk. And management objective policies and process for managing those risks. Disclosure about the credit risk, liquidity risk, market risk, operational risk, and interest rate risk, and how these risks are managed. This I, I have so told you in the annual report. When you see the annual reports, 
uh, even better banks annual report if you go through the bank annual report you can have more idea about this even the private banks larger banks you can get uh, nice uh, information about this risk management and changes in respect to risk management practice from prior period so these are the uh, requirement uh, disclosure requirement uh, related with respect to the risk management and actually the risk management this is more uh, in the table form it's gave, given uh, the risk management framework structure committees exposure because we have studied there are there may be several committees which involve the uh, risk management framework so structure committees exposure for different risk and policies and procedures techniques models so this has to be, this will be disclosure and credit risk of course credit quality by type finance statement age analysis of the assets past due because in the even in the non performing loans there may be different uh, categories uh, substandard doubtful loss category it's based on the age of the past due category so that will be disclosed and risk exposure to internal and external risk rating operations and fair value of collaterals those information will be as an aggregate level not the individual customer level as an aggregate level they will disclose it and then liquidity risk of course main liquidity ratios uh, and uh, funding uh, arrangement and contingency funding planning and committed and guarantees uh, likewise there may be uh, several uh, requirements they will uh, mm, they will uh, disclose it then interest rate risk and interest rate sensitive actually when you are seeing the annual reports you can see uh, two gap analysis report first one is liquidity risk uh, maturity gap analysis and other one is risk uh, interest rate sensitivity gap analysis so these two are regulatory requirements the annual report of course this is available and you can see that okay what is the maturity gap analysis based on the maturity pattern asset and liability of the uh, balance sheet will be categorized okay the loans for example if it is a loans and advances within one month period this much of loans will be get matured and within uh, one to three months period this much of loans will get matured and like so on even in the deposit wise there may be maturity gap analysis so this maturity gap analysis will give idea about the liquidity risk how banks manage the liquidity and the same wise the interest sensitive assets and liability will give the idea how the bank or finance company manage the market risk of the uh, market risk of the their balance sheet or the banks so which will give about the equity price risk currency risk and stress testing stress testing of course what is stress testing some idea because this is this is coming to the questions what is stress testing if you are working the banks and finance companies you will may under have the understanding about the stress testing what is stress testing any any answers in the short form what is stress testing? Have you heard about stress testing? Have you all heard about stress testing? Yeah, there are some answers. Testing done with a maximum capacity or market risk analysis and testing how well bank will react in the Sarcastic or uh, situation or is is a risk situation? Yeah, these are the answers closest to the uh, correct answers. For example, uh, there may be normal. Uh, okay, these all these balance sheet analysis are relevant to the other one other answers given by the macroeconomic factors. That is also correct. Actually, this is the idea. Uh, this stress test is normally the banks are uh, all the uh, all the uh, financial statements are based on the historical informations 
and which will give uh, which will disclose the financial performance or strengthen the stability of the particular institutions or bank under particular day but under the stress testing what we are doing is we are giving some shocks to the numbers existing numbers some shocks to the existing numbers and see what will happen to the capital of the bank or capital adequacy ratio of the banks because i am always telling that the capital adequacy ratio capital is the cushion the risk mitigation cushion there are two risk mitigation cushion one is capital other one is liquidity these two are we call as a resources because these are these are absorbing the risk excess risk uh, by the uh, by this capital and liquidity so the under the capital the solvency risk stress testing what we are doing is for example uh, there are the npl ratio is 5% okay we give the shocks that due to some adverse impact or due to some covid impact the nbl ratio of the banks will increase to 10% or will increase to 20% under that scenario what will happen to the capital of the bank whether the bank will still survive for that situation we will give some shocks and check whether still banks are resilient to that shock how we are giving for example we are giving okay current uh, nbl ratio is 5% level we are assuming that this nbl will increase to 20% level when the nbl is increased to 20% level that will hit the uh, what will happen that will hit the provisioning part or that will increase the escalate the provisioning of the banks and the particular bank and the, when the provisions are going uh, increasing that will hit the uh, pnl the balance sheet of the particular bank and through the balance sheet of profit that will have the negative impact to the capital of the bank so we are seeing whether when there is an increase in the uh, npl ratio what will be the impact to the capital and whether still bank has the adequate capital to survive to resilient to react to this or to absorb this additional shock of 20% nps what the point so that is the stress test likewise we are doing some other stress testing that okay due to some uh, again we are taking that is same example due to the covid impact uh, or some uh, other other adverse macroeconomic factors the depositors are withdrawing suddenly withdrawing the money from the banks okay Ra and, uh, other than the expected withdrawal fact pattern or the behavioral with withdrawal factor the banks or uh, customers suddenly go and withdraw 5% of their deposit or 10% of deposit the different customers simultaneously going and withdrawing then under that uh, under that adverse shock whether the still the bank has adequate liquidity to meet the requirement so we will give the shock and check whether they will have the adequate liquidity resources to meet that or to absorb that shock so these are the stress testing uh, we are doing Uh, and there are some other market uh, when uh, market stress testing of course when we are adjusting the interest rate scenarios what will happen if the interest rate will be changing that will uh, have the impact on uh, investments uh, the, the securities investment or loans and advances fair value and what will happen to the uh, bank capital so likewise we will have different uh, test uh, shocks given to the uh, existing position and see whether still the bank is resilient to uh, that shock so those are the test we are actually those are the test they are to carry out and has to disclose under the risk management section then the operational risk of course internal fraud and legal cases if there is any things of course the legal cases uh there is a, there if you see the uh, finance statement there will be a, 
notes to the financial statement okay there is no major cases the auditors will say or the accounts in the uh, notes to the accounts notes to the financial statement there will be notes always there is no litigations so there are some cases but there won't be any contingent liability or any any contingent uh, or bank may not, need not to have uh, pay anything or any losses could arise to the uh, the uh, due to that legal cases there may be no so likewise this also has to mention under the risk management disclosure requirement any questions okay uh this is uh, talking about the related party disclosure as i mentioned already uh, lks 24 required about the related party uh, disclosure requirements under that uh, which is which require that information on the related party and their relationship has to be uh, what is the what is the how is they are coming as a related party they have to mention and under the related party transaction nature of the related party relationship and maybe because it, it may be due to the uh, main shareholders or due to the main suppliers or due to the, uh, the board the board of directors or vice or any at uh, the nature of the relationship actually this related party things we will study more in the in the corporate governance section under the corporate governance maybe the next uh, class not next one in two or three after two or three classes we will discuss about the corporate uh, corporate governance under that we will uh, we will discuss about the how this related party uh, or relationship can be created actually nature of the related party relationship has to be mentioned in the report or disclosure requirement and information about the transaction so if there is any transactions they have to mention that what type of transaction had with the related party and information about the outstanding balances what is the outstanding balances uh, having uh, about this particular related party transaction generally if it is a banks you can see that uh, banks may granted loans and advances to the related party this is common some people are having banks to get the money and get the loans at a very low interest rate some directors are doing that actually information about the outstanding balances and uh, and those those will uh, okay if it is a loans granted to particular directors and they are related companies then they have to say okay this much of loans granted and this much of outstanding balances are available in the uh, particular date and information about the impairment and bad debts with related to the related party if there's a related party a company's default the uh, debts then they have to mention about those inf information and their informants and these should be disclosed and for each category of related party example parent company subsidiary associates joint ventures directors key management personnel and major shareholders another related party so actually this will applicable to the first one also the nature of the relationship it may be parent company it may be subsidiaries it may be associate relationship it may be joint ventures or it may be direct related related party key management person who is the key management person ceos or dgm credit dgm uh, treasury likewise key management personnel and major shareholders the shareholders who has more than 50% shareholding or more than 15-20% uh, shareholding. Likewise, major shareholders and other related parties. So they have to have, they have to first mention the nature of the relationship and information about the transaction and then information about the outstanding balance and if there is any bad debts with regard to the banks and finance company, if there is any bad debts, those information and these uh, should be disclosed in each and every category of the transaction. So these are the requirement related party. And on top of that, it says that disclosure of the key management personnel also key KMP is means 
key management personnel. Related things also has to be disclosure because the bank of, in you know, not in Sri Lanka in the foreign countries of course the CEOs and key management personnel are getting higher bonuses. Uh, so those information has to be uh, higher salaries and especially higher bonuses. So those information has to be disclosed in the annual report. So short-term employee benefits, post-employment benefits, and other long-term benefits and termination benefits, share-based benefits. This issue of employee share ownership uh, uh, plan under that also, eShop under that also, uh, there are share-based payments also given to the key management personnel. So those type of information are uh, required to be disclosed by the banks and finance companies. Why we this uh, this disclosure to keep the transparency about the uh, finance statement or finance or transaction of financial transaction of the particular banks or finance companies or any other companies. So these are the related party requirements. Any anything you all wanted to ask from me? Okay, then I'll move to the other disclosure requirement, uh, which is about the corporate governance disclosures. Uh, the corporate governance, of course, if you will see the uh, our uh, this syllabus, the corporate governance also one of the separate topic which we have to discuss under this uh, finance institution management subject. Actually, under that hour, uh, at that time, we will discuss this co corporate governance disclosure. Anyhow, uh, for this, even the finance statement purpose, we will cover this uh, without having much discussion about this. We will cover this, but we will. I'll just. I wanted to tell you that. Uh, this section will be discussed uh, in very detailed manner under the corporate governance topic. So the first one is corporate governance disclosure, the board of directors. They have to mention the, the chairman, CEO, board composition, profiles and experience qualification. Actually, these, the, we will discuss this in a very detailed manner. So they have to mention about these information to the general public or stakeholders and board appointed committee. There are several committees appointed by the board. Uh, remuneration committee, nomination committee, risk management committee, compliance committee, internal audit committee. There are several committees appointed by the uh, board of directors. So uh, those uh, committee structure and functions and composition and attendance of different committee members uh, it has to be uh, mentioned in the annual report. That is also one of the disclosure requirements. And transaction with the related party. This is, of course, we have already dis uh, discussed. And key performance indicators also has to be disclosure under the corporate governance disclosure. So uh, capital adequacy, other key ratios, growth trends, and other reasons and various disclosure under the different reports, director, management, corporate governance, internal audit and respect. So these are the uh, main uh, uh, main disclosure requirement under the uh, corporate governance disclosure. Uh, so all these are given to, uh, given, uh, are recorded to disclosure to ensure the transparency of the companies. Because why, okay, uh, to have a more understanding why all these requirements are uh, disclosure requirements are imposed to the banks and finance companies or listed companies rather than our uh, entrepreneurship did you get the questions rather than because when compared to the entrepreneurship or proprietary uh, business for a company, particularly listed companies, have more disclosure requirement. The banks are having the most disclosure requirement compared to the listed companies. Why this? 
why there are more disclosure requirement for the banks and finance companies compared to the a listed company so compared to the a proprietorship business why just to have an idea why there are more disclosure requirement for a bank or for a listed company compared to the proprietorship or some small shop in a, on a village there is no any uh, any any uh, disclosure requirement to that why it is more disclosure requirement for a bank or listed companies why any 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 idea yeah exactly because we use the funds of the public or capital of the public and we lend to our funds that is the main reason actually that is the main reason because for a bank of course they are using more funds from the depositors funds there is a general public funds so they must have more transparency in their business because if there is something goes wrong the, the general public will lose the money general public will lose the money so they have more more stringent disclosure requirement but the listed company compared to the bank the less disclosure requirement because they are running still they are running with the shareholders fund but the shareholders and managements are different two different people so they have to have some disclosure but it is less than the <coughs> it is less than the a uh, bank requirement but when compared to the uh, proprietorship they have to have more requirement disclosure requirement the listed company because they are using uh, the shareholders fund the management and shareholders are two different people but in case of uh, proprietorship it is nothing because they are the owner they are the employer they are the, he is every he is everything so there will be a more a very less disclosure requirement for a proprietorship compared to proprietorship a listed company a company or listed company will have somewhat higher disclosure requirement and compared to the uh, listed company a bank will have more and more disclosure requirement because they are running with a public deposits or public money compared to the uh, compared to their capital the deposit is 5 to 10 times higher than the capital so they have they are dealing with the public money so there will be a, there should be more disclosure uh, more transparency that's why there's a disclosure requirements understand i think i hope you will have uh, understand it so uh, this is the corporate governance disclosure and uh, next one is about the fair value disclosures the fair value of course Uh, which is under the uh, Sri Lankan Financial Reporting uh, Standard uh, (SLFRS). Uh, so under that, actually, they have to uh, measure the. They have to um, disclose the fair value of the assets and liabilities, uh, finance, especially finance assets. Uh, assets. And for the uh, assets uh, valuation, there are different techniques they are using. Uh, if there is no uh, first one is the quoted price of similar instrument which is more uh, fair value method more acceptable fair value method uh, in the sense for example if i if i invest in the uh, share market okay the quoted share price of the similar instrument uh, if i for example if i invest in the jk chairs or bank invest in the jk chair the quoted price of jk chairs will be uh, the particular day's price will be considered as a fair value treatment that is one level one the level two actually there is no uh, particular quoted price similar instrument is not available then what they will do is they will uh, give some uh, comparable observable market inputs other than the level one inputs and then they will uh, have a um, this second level to uh, fair value method 
and level 3 favorable method on of course inputs are not based on the observable market data and based on the best available data so if the market is very liquid or there is no market in that case uh, they will uh, they will try to uh, move to the level 3 for a uh, fair value treatment level 3 treatment for a fair value or none of that no valuation techniques book value or acquisition value will be method which is the cost based method so the different fair value methods are followed by the banks and finance companies and listed companies so insurance companies as well so they have to disclose okay which is the fair value method they have used and for uh, which amount of uh, uh, assets for which amount of assets and all those details they have to mention and uh, of course the Basel 3 of course you all know that if if those who are working in the banks and finance companies may have some idea about the Basel 3 disclosure requirement based on the licensed banks with effective from the 1st July 2017 they have to have market under the market discipline they have to have uh, some disclosure requirement why this disclosure requirement is strengthen the stability of the financing system by allowing the market participant to assess the key information on banks capital risk and control process so actually the risk and the cushion the resources they have to risk and resilient to the uh, banks they have to assess uh, to, to, to strengthen the financing system allowing to assess and improve the consistency and comparability of information across the banking institutions and facilitate the assessment of the banks by others including investors assess analysis customers and other banks and rating agencies for the, this purpose on uh, these pillar three requirements are coming uh, disclosure on capital and liquidity uh, risk weighted assets capital planning regulatory and uh, accounting uh, reporting on risk management has to be disclosed under this there are 14 templates uh, this i have already mentioned that there are 14 templates on the quarterly and annual basis in the press or in the website on the both solo or consolidated basis they have to report but it's the solo and consolidated basis any idea i have mentioned here 14 templates on the quarterly and annual basis in the press or website both on solo and consolidated basis what is the solo basis reporting there's a question in uh, 11 14 what is mean by inputs yeah yeah that's the thing the inputs means for the fair value fair value uh, method we are using uh, three levels used uh, inputs uh, so what are the inputs we are giving to uh, derive the fair value so they have to um, mention whether it is level one inputs or level two inputs and level three inputs uh, to to derive the fair value that is the meaning and then the fair value the valuation techniques as well they have to mention that is that meaning okay uh, then uh, this uh, what is the solo and consolidated basis what is the any idea i have mentioned here the 14 templates on quarterly and annual basis in the press or website they have to disclose under the basel 3 both on solo and consolidated basis for example in the bank some banks may have subsidiary and associates the financial subsidiaries and associates the solo base the bank should <coughs> publish the accounts the solo the bank balance it only without without consolidated and consolidated include the uh, the subsidiary company as well as uh, associate based on the appropriate uh, consolidated mechanism so the both methods they have to uh, publish uh, annual report and quarterly basis the financial information which is under the pillar 3 disclosure requirements any questions before moving to the financial performance analysis any questions 
otherwise i can move to the financial performance analysis uh, before moving to that if you'll have any questions i can uh, handle it okay uh, since there is no questions i'll move to the financial performance analysis uh, this is uh, under this section. So first we have seen what is the financial reporting and then we have uh, uh, discussed something about the uh, disclosure requirements and uh, then we are now moving to the financial performance analysis. Under the financial performance analysis, uh, this financial, financial position, which is the uh, balance sheet based analysis, financial performance, position of the uh, company and financial performance, of course, a PNL based analysis and cash flow and equity, of course, you all know that. And techniques, we are using different techniques to have an analysis, financial performance analysis, uh, the ratio analysis, trend analysis, and compare, uh, comparison with strategies, targets, and peers, and industries, and statistical techniques. The ratio analysis is generally, uh, that is, we are going to discuss now, uh, there are some key performance ratios, we are, our indicators, we will calculate in the ratios, based on the ratios, we are doing the analysis for financial performance of the banks and finance institutions or finance companies or insurance companies and trend analysis of course you all know that this is a trend between the uh, previous period and, and the current period or previous few previous period and so so what is the trend analysis and uh, which is also uh, based on that we will forecast for the next few months or few periods and see the trend okay what will be the trend based on the baseline or based on the adverse scenario or adverse one or favorable scenario so based on that we will have the trend analysis also for the financial performance and comparison with the strategic tar uh, target and uh, strategies statistics and peers with the industry and statistical technique of course uh, this stress testing and all uh, and some indicators, indices we can calculate under the statistical techniques, financial market stability indices, one of the indices we prepared, the central bank, so which will give an idea about how the financial market stability is going. So that is sort of statistical based techniques. So uh, to, the, to, to analyze the financial performance, so we are using four uh, information, of course five, but mainly four the balance sheet and PNL, cash flow statement and equities and using the techniques, ratio analysis, trend analysis and comparison with uh, things and uh, other one is accounting technique. These are accounting techniques, other one is statistical techniques. Uh, objective of the performance analysis of course to strategic planning, for the strategic planning decide on expansion and new product etc and to identify the area sector to be improved for example i can give an uh, example for this uh, for example okay when they are when they are analyzing the uh, account they they uh, they identify that okay staff cost will be high or top management cost will represent uh, five, uh, 40 percent or 50 percent of the total cost of the banks so they think okay this is the area we have to improve. Or there are some uh, damaged goods or bad loans. So the, the NPL loans, non-performing loans are increased continuously. So what we can do it for it. So th those are the, to identify the areas and sectors to be improved and to identify different type of unidentified, unidentified risk and uh, take mitigations and to compare with the industry sectors peers with other study to formulate with the strategic plans i think this is you can just read and get the idea need not to have much uh, discussion on this uh, and uh, 
then to decide on capital planning because the capital infusion and type of capital instrument is most important for a, a bank because you know that bank cannot expand their business freely if they wanted to expand their business they must have capital enough capital why i am saying so because they are a capital adequacy requirement which is imposed by the regulators every bank must have at least 12.5% capital adequacy ratio. This capital adequacy ratio is calculated based on the uh, risk weight, uh, the available capital to risk weighted assets. So <coughs> whenever they, the bank wanted to expand their business, they must have adequate capital. Otherwise, they are, if they expand their business, their risk weighted capital assets will go uh, high, then there will be a shortage in capital adequacy ratio and then to assess the level of profitability and quality of the earnings they must have <coughs> this uh, that is also one of the objective of uh, performance analysis and then uh, to address the low yielding assets to measure the level of efficiency and to address inefficient operations there must be a uh, there must be a, uh, oh, that is also one of the objective of performance analysis and to assess the level of meeting day, day to day liquidity requirement also for, to find out also one of the objective. So these are things you can just uh, read it and uh, get the idea. There is nothing much to explain. If there is any, any questions, I can accommodate it. Okay. Then I'll move to the uh, ratio analysis. Actually, uh, in a bank of finance companies, when we are doing the risk assessment, we are, move, uh, we are following a method called CAMEL, CAMEL method, CAMEL risk analysis method, C-A-M-E-L, CAMEL. What is the, uh, the CAMEL method is, actually, uh, I can just read, uh, write it to the board. Uh, I think you can know. This is uh, normally in the risk assessment, we are using the CAMEL method. C -M -C -A -M -E -L, CAMEL method to assess the risk. The CAMEL each letter has the meaning, the C for capital. C for capital. A for asset quality. What is the asset for a bank? It's a loans and advances. So the quality of loans as an asset, the asset quality. And M for management. E for, what is E? Earnings. L. L is very familiar. L4. What is L? Liquidity. So, we are just calculating or we are just assessing the banks and finance companies risk based on the camel analysis the camel means the capital asset quality management earnings and liquidity for a capital we have different uh, ratios capital adequacy ratio total capital adequacy ratio tier one capital adequacy ratio likewise for asset quality, we are having different uh, um, 
ratios, NPL, net across NPL ratio, net NPL ratio, provision in uh, coverage ratio, likewise. For a management, we are having efficiency ratio, total cost to staff cost ratio, likewise. For earnings, we are having ROA, ROA, return on assets, return on liability. For that, we will cover the earnings. And for that, and for the liquidity, we are covering the liquidity, uh, of course, we are covering the statutory liquidity asset ratio and uh, other uh, this liquidity coverage ratio and uh, net funding flow ratio likewise we are calculating so this camel rating we are we are just following this camel rating for the um, Okay, so we are ca uh, calculating, we are, we are following the camel rating system to, um, to assess the risk of the uh, banks and finance companies. So here, we are just, uh, the first one is we are starting with the asset quality. Asset quality is the most important ratio analysis for a bank and finance companies. The gross NPL ratio. The gross NPL ratio is the i think you will have the idea about what is npl but npl means non performing loans what is non performing loans any idea what is non performing loans what is non performing loans the loans which are in arrears for more than 3 months is called non performing loans so if it is the gross NPL ratio, so we are calculating the gross NPLs. So non-forming gross non-forming loans divided by the gross advances. It means total advances multiplied by that hundred. So which is we are just calculating gross NPL ratio, which is giving an idea about the asset quality of the banks. Asset quality means the quality of loans and advances of the banks. The second one is net NPL ratio. The net NPL ratio, of course, giving some idea about uh, the net NPL means, what is the net NPL? The gross and what is the difference between the gross NPL and net NPL is? The gross NPL, we are just taking the total non-performing loans. And the net NPL, we are taking the total non-performing loan minus interest in suspend minus the provision. You all must have the idea about it. Uh, you have, the interest in suspense means once it's coming to the uh, classified as non-performing loans, there will not be any payment from the customer because customers stop to meet their obligations. That's what these loans become the non-performing loans. Okay, once it's become the non-performing loan, but still we recognize the interest, but we will not get that uh, interest payment. So those interest we will call as a interest in suspense. So from the gross NBL, we have to minus this interest in suspect as well we had to minus any provision we made to with regard to the specific provision we made with regard to particular NPL ratio we have to deduct that NPL also that also from the gross NPL so we can derive the net NPL so you may get the point the net NPL means I'll just type to the uh, I'll just type to the uh, the uh, uh, yeah, the, there was an answer. The default loans it means ninety plus uh, default. The net NPL means gross NPLs, gross NPLs minus interest in suspense minus 
specific provision a call the brus npl minus interest in suspend minus specific provisions are called net npl so the net npl divide by the net advances multiply by the 100 is called net npl ratio so uh, this is the way we are calculating first we are calculating the gross npl ratio and then we are calculating net npl ratio then the next one is provision coverage ratio this is also one of the ratio uh, calculated to uh, see the qu asset quality or some mitigation factor actually with uh, with respect to non performing loans the banks make some specific provision let's assume this way a customer obtain 100 million actually the if it is a board it will be more uh, useful but no harm i'll, I'll explain to you just listen carefully if a customer has 100 million uh, loans and he defaulted okay for that 100 million loans if the customer give a 50 million or 75 million worth of collateral okay 75 million worth of collateral then what we will do is okay 100 million outstanding loans and collateral value is 75 million so net exposure is 25 million so we will make some provision for the net exposure okay we will make the 50 percent of the provision then we will have 12.5 million as a provision we just uh, uh, make some provision to uh, to meet the, any uh, potential losses with regard to these loans so what we are doing is we are making which is called this this 12.5 million is called specific provision specifically for particular customer we may we make the provision specific provision i think i have explained this at the risk management section as well so take the specific provision and divide the gross NPA and multiply by the 100 is the provision coverage ratio. So whenever the provision coverage ratios are high, the bank, uh, the risk absorption capacity will be high. And the impaired ratio, of course, impaired assets and total assets multiplied by the 100, which is also we can take and the concentration ratio of course what we can do is uh the, the this is the, i i have already explained you all that in the in the risk management section uh these ratios can be the the credit risk can be there are two type of credit risk one is default risk other one is concentration risk this above for first four ratios are calculating the default risk of the banking sector or finance company sector but the last one last ratio is calculating the concentration risk of the banks so the concentration risk what we have will do is okay out of our total loan portfolio let's assume the total loan portfolio is 500 million of a bank x out of the total loan portfolio if the bank x granted 50 million to the agriculture sector then concentration ratio will be 10 percent because the loans given to the agriculture sector is 50 divide by the total loans what is the total loan 500 million into 100 is a 10 percent so concentration risk is the 10 percent let's assume other example uh, if a if a bank uh, have a for example for the consumption loan bank granted 150 million okay the total portfolio is 500 million okay out of 500 million 150 millions are given to the consum as a consumption loan in that case what would be the concentration ratio 
the 150 million divide by uh, the provision for 25 million yes we are making provision for the um, the, the okay I'll, I'll come into the question later uh, so the uh, what is the concentration ratio for the consumption load the, uh, the 150 divided by the 500 million into uh, 100 so nearly it is 30 percent so likewise we can calculate the concentration whenever the concentration ratios are increasing the risk level will increase because highly concentration is not good to the uh, banks that we have already discussed so under the ratio on asset quality we have discussed about the gross NPL ratio, net NPL ratio, provision coverage ratio, impaired asset ratio, and concentration ratio. Then actually there's a question from a student. He mentioned that, uh, Johan, he mentioned that provision for 25 million. Yeah, provision for 25 million because in that example, we just assume that uh, the total loans outstanding, the bad loan outstanding is 100 million and we are having the collateral for 75 million. So the net exposure is 100 minus 75. The net exposure will be 25 million. So we will make the provision for the net exposure. If it is a 100, uh, if it is a 50% 50, 50 uh, provision, then we will make the provision for 25 million into 50%, then 12.5 million. But if we make the 100% provision, then provision will be 25 million. So, but we have to make the provision for the net exposure, the 100 minus 75 million, uh, the, the balance net exposure is 25 million. We will make the, or the bank will make the, uh, yes. Uh, Johan again mentioned that for NPL provision, we do only take the capital outstanding. That's right, because we are assuming that the, the 100 million is the capital outstanding. Actually, here in that example, I haven't taken the interest in suspense. If we, we can expand this example, the 100 million, for example, okay, total outstanding is uh, 100 million. There's a specific provision or interest in suspend in that 100 million specific interest in suspend portion is uh, 5 million okay then collateral is uh, 75 million in that case the gross NPL is 100 million minus uh, gross NPL is uh, I, I can write in the board otherwise we can just leave it the 100 minus 5 million interest in suspense minus collateral value the 75 million then all together we have to minus 80 million and 100 minus 80 then balance 20 million we have to make the provision net exposure will be provision but that in that example we assume there is an interest in suspense but whenever the i'm uh, taking the first example there is no interest in suspense so we just uh, we just uh, calculated uh, this is 100 million as a capital outstanding. So 100 million minus 75 million as a uh, collateral, then balance 25 million is the net exposure. Based on the net exposure, if it is a 50%, 12.5, it is a 100%, 25 million. I hope you all have understand the uh, example. Any, any questions with regard to this uh, ratio on asset quality or previous sections? Any, any, any questions? Okay. Then what we can do is, uh, we will, uh, into, uh, actually there are uh, six more slides. Uh, it will take some time. So I'm stopping with this and we will cover the balance part in the uh, next class. Uh, of course, uh, what we can do is, uh, uh, so today's pay, uh, in the class, we have first seen um, 
the the reporting process and financial reporting what is financial reporting and why financial reporting is important and then we have discussed about uh, something about disclosure requirements and then financial analysis and under the financial analysis i have explained there are more finance analysis part but we have today we have discussed about the asset quality sections so um, with this section I, i like to wind up today's class if there is no questions or if you have any questions i can accommodate one or two questions or accommodate the questions otherwise i will uh, i will stop the class with this and uh, we will uh, cover this balance slides i think there are six slides we can cover the next class as well as um, there are other sections uh, related sections audit we will cover that as well with the, in the next class any any if you all don't have any questions i'll stop with this thank you